with me, Simon Prickett. Right in the corner. Ah! Hi, this is Simon with Redis University. In this video, I want to show you some new features of Redis 6.2, which is a recent release and the first release under the new Redis governance model. What we're going to look at today are five features that were introduced or enhanced with Redis 6.2, including some new commands. We're going to do that by way of a GitHub repo and some example code. So if you want to follow along at home, what I'm going to do here is set up the uh, repo. I'm going to copy this and go to my terminal and clone it. So let's do git clone the repo. There we go. And go into its folder. And what you'll see is I have a Docker Compose YAML. So to make this easy, we've put Redis into a Docker container. So you can try this out without affecting any existing Redis installs that you have. So to get started, I'm going to do docker compose up minus D because I want it to run in the background. And mine started pretty quickly because I've already run this container before. Yours might take a little while to pull from Docker Hub. But once you're there, we're going to get docker ps shows that we have a Redis container running with a server inside it. And I need to do a couple of things. So first off, I'm going to connect and load up some sample data. So to do that, I'm going to do docker exec minus it hitc redis and run a shell. So now I have a shell inside that container. The container comes with some sample data inside sample data. I'm going to do load all.sh. So that's loaded some sample data into Redis. Um, let's just quickly start the Redis CLI, which is how we're going to interact with Redis for all of these demos. And we will uh, check that we've got the right version of Redis too. So again, I'm going to do docker exec minus it, and I want to do a container, and I'm going to run Redis CLI this time. So now I'm in a Redis CLI, I'm connected to that Redis server, which is in the container, and hopefully it's a Redis 6. And info server will tell us that. We have indeed got Redis 6.2.1, so we should be good to go with the rest of the examples. The first thing we're going to look at is two enhancements to the Redis set command that are new for Redis 6.2. So here I'm connected to our Docker containers running the Redis 6.2 server. And imagine I want to store my favorite flavor of ice cream. So I might do set favorite flavor and I like mint chocolate chip. So as you'd expect, it comes back with okay. I've set the favorite flavor key to the value mint chocolate chip. But what if I change my mind? Um, I can set this key to something else and I might want to know what it was set to already. So in previous versions of Redis, we'd have done a get favorite flavor and got the value mint chocolate chip. And then we'd have done a second set and set it to something else. We can now do both of those in one command. So if I now do set favorite flavor and change my mind to vanilla bean and then say get what happens now is that I get back the old value at the same time as setting the new one. So that's just one round trip to Redis. And we can verify this. If I do get favorite flavor, you can see it's now vanilla bean. So the other enhancement that I wanted to look at is uh, to do with expiry. So the set command has always had an EX option. So we could set a key. So let's set some key to some value, then do EX 20 seconds. And then if I do TTL some key, we can see it's counting down. So we set that key and after 20 seconds, that key will be expired for us. And we did that in a single operation. Um, so let's try it again and maybe do get some key. Oh, it's still there. Uh, so we're a little bit too quick. Try again. There you go. It's gone. So that's been what we've been able to do traditionally. What we can now do in Redis 6.2 is also set a timestamp. So a specific point in time when we want that key to expire. So I can do that. Imagine if I have a coupon that I want people to use to buy ice creams and I want it to expire at the end of next weekend. So I could do set coupon code to some value. So we'll say the coupon value is going to be weekend sale. That's what we want people to enter. And then I can say 
EX app, so expires at, and then 162.02.5200. That's the timestamp for midnight Monday at the time of recording. And if I hit that, it's gonna say, okay. And if I do TTL coupon code, we have something that expires at a specific time rather than in a specific number of ses seconds. So if you're interested in using millisecond timestamps, there's also a PX app variant that's got you covered for that. So next we'll move on and look at some more enhancements for strings. Okay, so the second thing we're going to look at that's new in Redis 6.2 are some alternatives for the get command. So I'm connected to a Docker container here running Redis 6.2, and I'll continue with the ice cream example from the previous segment. So imagine we want to give our customers a coupon and we want it to be a one-time use coupon. So once somebody's used it, no one else can redeem it. So we're going to do set one-time coupon to half off. So whoever gets to redeem this gets half off their ice cream. Now, what we wanna happen is when someone gets this, we want them to delete the key as well so that subsequently people can't access it. Um, traditionally, we'd have done that with two commands, a get and then a del, and we might have wrapped those in a transaction. But in Redis 6.2, we get this new command that does that for us. So get del one time coupon is gonna return half off to the first person. Then anybody else that asks for it, they're too late. It's already gone. They're going to get nothing. So another type of coupon we might want to offer would be a limited time one. And there's two ways we could do that. We could do it so that it's a limited time from when we first offer it. So like two hours from whenever I do the set command and we do set with the EX option for that. What I want to do is two hours from the time at which the first person redeems it. So what I can do now is I can do set limited time coupon and we'll do free ice cream. And that's set it. It doesn't have a TTL at this point, but when the first person comes to get it, what we're going to do is use a new command, get the X that atomically gets it and sets an expiry on it. So we're going to do limited time coupon EX 7200, which is two hours in seconds. There's also PX options if you prefer milliseconds as well as EX app and PX app for timestamps. So the first person's got that back and now they've triggered the two hour countdown. So this key will now expire in two hours and we were able to do both of those operations with the single get EX command. Now it's time to take a look at what's changed with streams in Redis 6.2. Specifically, I want to look at a new trimming strategy for stream entries that affects the xtrim and the xadd commands. So here I'm connected to our Docker container. I've got Redis CLI running, and we have a stream in here that was set up with the sample data, and it contains redemptions of those coupon codes for the ice cream example. So if I, for example, do xrange, and my stream is called red redemptions and I do minus plus count one this will get me one end of the stream and if I do x rev range redemptions plus minus count one I'll get me the other so we can see the uh, the complete range of timestamps that we have in the stream there now Prior to Redis 6.2, the way that you trim streams was using a max len modifier to the xadd or the xtrim keywords, and that would trim the stream to a certain number of entries, so a length. Um, so we can see here, I currently have 250 entries in my stream, so I could trim that down to say exactly or approximately 100, and the approximation was for performance reasons. Now, that's great, but it's not always the way we want to work with this sort of time series data. So what we want to do is perhaps trim according to time. So if I have a timestamp of say the last thing that I read from the stream, I might want to trim the stream such that anything with a timestamp less than that is removed. So I can remove things I've already processed. So in Redis 6.2, we can now do that with what's called the min ID trimming strategy that is new. So if we do an xtrim command and we do xtrim with 
redemptions and we say min ID, which is our new keyword. And I have a timestamp here, 16173076960000. So that's a timestamp that's somewhere in the range of the two above. Then what Xtrim is going to return is how many entries were trimmed. So we now trimmed off everything that has a timestamp that's less than the one provided there. So if we then do xlen redemptions, we should see that it's now 234, so 250 minus 16, it streams a little bit shorter. And if we have a look at it and we do x range redemptions minus plus count one, we'll see that the uh, first entry or the lowest entry in the stream now is the minimum ID that we provided. So everything less than that has now been removed from the stream. So we can do this with Xtrim. We can also do this as you probably expect with Xad. So if I do Xad redemptions, and I do min ID and 16173078510000. So I'm saying when you add a new entry to the stream redemptions, trim anything that has an ID less than this whilst adding that new entry. So our new entry is going to have an ID of, we'll let Redis decide. So star means Redis, you set the timestamp. And then we need some data. So coupon code, we'll say weekend sale. And the user that redeemed it is 9002. So what's happened there is we've gone away and added another entry to the stream. And we've also trimmed it a bit to that timestamp that we provided. So what we get back in this case is the timestamp of the new entry. And now when I run xlen redemptions again, you'll see that it was 234. We added one and removed some more. And now we have 230. So this new trimming strategy allows you to work with streams in a way that's more suited to them being ordered by time series and not in terms of how many entries you want to trim. So this is something that should be very, very useful if you're using Redis streams, and uh, I'll be really interested to see how you use it. Our next feature is another new command, this time for working with Redis hashes. It's called the hrandfield command, and it's going to let us choose a random field from those within a hash. So let's check it out. Here I am connected to the uh, Redis instance in Docker that we've built for this video. And what I've got in here is a couple of hashes. So one of the problems I have in life is I love going to a certain restaurant and they have deals where I can choose an appetizer and then I can choose like two entrees. And quite often I have trouble choosing because I like everything. So here we're going to look at how H Ranfield can help me make some decisions. So I have a hash called appetizers here in Redis. And we have a number of appetizers, each of which has a menu number and a description. So number two, sesame prawn toast, always a good choice. Um, they're all good choices. This is my problem. So what I want to do is have Redis decide for me which one of these I'm going to order. So we're going to use the new hranfield command. Then we do hranfield appetizer, appetizers and say how many uh, random appetizers I want to get back. So we'll say, I just want one. And it's picked number six for us. So that's great. And it's picked six, which is the field name in the hash. But quite often, we're going to want the value back as well. So what I can then do is do with values on the end of that command. And I'll get, now we've picked number four, the crispy pancake roll. So I can get the values back as well as just the field name. So this has a lot of fun potential for building games and stuff, but maybe also things like um, selecting from different possible responses to the same sort of question if you're building a chatbot or something like that. So I've also got the entrees here in the hash. So we can see we've got a number of entrees here. And the deal that this place does is I can choose two of those. Um, they don't have to be uh, different ones. They could be the same. And we'll look at how hranfield works here because there's a sort of subtlety here that we can use to our advantage. So if I do hranfield uh, entrees and I want to get two and let's do with the values. 
Then it's chosen number 10, Szechuan shredded beef and number 16, Malaysian chicken curry for me. And those are great choices. Um, and what's going to happen with specifying, let's do it again, with specifying how many I want is it's going to pick that many values from the hash or that many name value pairs. And they're always going to be different. But this deal allows me to have the same uh, entree for both of my selections if I just want a double helping of something because it's so good. And the syntax for that is what I'm going to do is change this two here to a minus two. And what that's going to tell Redis is that you're allowed to pick the same one twice. So this may take a couple of tries, but we should eventually get double something. Let's keep going. And there we go. We get double roast duck with plum sauce, number 12 and number 12. So that's a quick intro to H. Ranfield. Um, like I say, it's probably quite fun for building things like uh, quiz things, chatbots, gaming stuff, but I'm sure you can think of other applications for it in your code. Okay, so the final feature I wanted to talk about in this video is a new command for working with Redis sets. So here I've got the uh, Redis CLI open in the Docker container and I have a set. So let's have a look at S members winning lotto. So this is a set that contains winning lottery numbers. So say the lottery draw just happened and these are the winning numbers. What we want to do is to be able to check our lottery ticket against those numbers. Now, in previous versions of Redis, we'd have done S is member winning lotto and then some number. So is number three part of that set? Yes, it is. And is number four part of that set? Zero means no, it isn't. In this case, I want to pass in a whole lottery tickets worth of six numbers and see if all of those come back as winning numbers or if some of them are unfortunately losing numbers and we don't get to retire and live happily ever after. So with S's member, I'd have had to do six calls to Redis to do that. Or in a programming language, I'd have pipelined them and sent them as one network round trip, got six results back and passed those out. With Redis 6.2, I can use this new command, SM is member, so S multiple is member, winning lotto, and then I can pass in my lottery numbers. So let's see if I've won. So I'm going to go with uh, 1, 5, 19, 23, 47 and 66. Hopefully, uh, well, we didn't win, but what we can see is that we got a mix of results back, but from a single command round trip to Redis. So SM is member allows us to check for multiple set membership in a single command. So here I've got two out of the six winning numbers. We're not gonna retire off of that, but I've saved myself some network round trips. In this video, we barely scratched the surface of what's new and improved in Redis 6.2. The release also includes enhanced geo-searching capabilities and new commands for working with the list and sorted set data types. For full details, check out our blog post and the release notes on GitHub. We'd love for you to join us in our Discord community as well. We have an ongoing discussion about all things Redis. I'll post the links in the description down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time. With me, Simon Prickett. I need the corner. Ah!